Hello and welcome to News Peaks. I'm Rachel. I'm Connor. I'm Natalie. And I'm Rufus. And today we're going to be looking at that cheeky little election. Well, not that. I can just say election. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do it again and I'll just say election. <laughs> Nah, and they're not really planning to vote. There may not be as huge a change as you would like, but I think it's important to vote and important to have your voice heard. I, I, I should, because I'm supposed to. If all the teenagers, well, the youth, um, was to vote, they, they, they'll be able to make the change. They made the difference between what parties to. So I think, yeah, my vote would probably make a change. So in the 2010 general election, 56% of young people who were eligible to vote didn't. Like, why, why do we think that is? Is that because young people just don't care? Is it because they think that everything's going so marvellously well without them that they don't need to vote? Like, what, what, what do you guys think is like? Um, well, I think one of the main reasons why we don't vote is because we don't feel like they seem we have some sort of connection with them. They don't yeah. really, we're not their main priority. They care about most people, in my opinion, they care most people that have a certain amount of money, they live a certain lifestyle, yeah. and anyone else who's not that, they don't care about them. The fact that Parliament looks very little like the people it's there to represent is one of the reasons why people find it hard to relate to politics. Many fewer people are getting involved in our politics and many fewer people are turning out to vote. And within that, it's fair to say that there are particular groups who are less likely to vote. And they are young people, they are people of a lower socioeconomic status, so, so poorer people, uh, people of ethnic minorities. Politicians and political parties from our target voters, mm -hmm. and the majority of young people, if you cast for young people being under 20, the majority of us can't vote anyway, because we can't vote until we're 18. Mm -hmm. And even then, like, if you're born in the wrong month of a year, you can wait You can wait until you're 23 before you can vote in a general election. It's, it's like a quarter of your life yeah. you can't vote. <laughs> exactly. And you can actually go through the, your entire compulsory education system mm. from primary through to college now yeah. and never touch upon the study of politics at all. Yeah. And you get a, a population who've gone through a compulsory education system who don't understand a word of it. Democracy in politics is a really important part of life and it's an important part of being a member of this society. And if we don't give it that importance in schools, then we're failing young people and we're not giving them the tools to participate in our democracy. Oh yeah! Well I speak loud! And I carry a bigger stick! At 16, mm -hmm. you're allowed to enlist in the military, you're allowed to get married with your parents' permission, mm -hmm. you're allowed to have sex, but you're not allowed to vote. Mm -hmm. Bear in mind the fact that you've got to be 10 years old to hold criminal responsibility. So if you're allowed to have criminal responsibility at that age, why is it that you cannot vote at a younger age? Yeah. Last year, there was the Scottish independence referendum and we saw 16 and 17 year olds voting in that referendum. And there are all sorts of people who are terrified that because you're going to have 16 and 17 year olds voting, the whole thing would be chaos and no one would know how they were going to behave. <laughs> They wouldn't understand the issues and all the rest of it. Whatever. That referendum showed once and for all that it's absurd to deny 16 and 17 year olds the vote. But it's so difficult though because you get so much stick for saying you're not going to vote because not voting is considered apathy. Trust it's considered me. that you don't care. And I think that it'd be interesting to see what would happen if you actually had the possibility to go none of the above. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And to actually go, I actually don't like any yeah. of these well, you, people you and can, I don't care. You can spoil your ballot. But just, that just gets ignored and that gets considered. There's no. They do count how many ballots are spoiled. Oh really? Yeah. Because mm -hmm. if you had it as an official, there was an official choice of yeah. actually, I don't like any of these people. People would learn how many people are dissatisfied with what's going on, and I think that's possibly the mm. most powerful thing is finding out that other people are actually going. No, I think it's pretty shit too. <laughs> so do I. You know, yeah. and then you actually get people who can come together and go, let's do something yeah. about it then. But what if you don't have a say so? Like, say if you're like what you said, you're under 16 or actually under 18. Yeah. You don't have a say in any of the policies. Like, how do you go about that? There's like direct action, you can protest. But yeah. that never gets. People take protests as quite negative. Yeah, I mean, yeah and sometimes they totally like yeah. how many people went on the Iraq anti war demonstration with the other three? Million, like yeah. over something over a million. A million yeah. Yeah. And who cares? We're gonna do it anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's true. Yeah, it was, yeah. But at least people got angry about that though. Yeah. And people it, it, know that people cared and that we were ignored. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think it's some some things. It's ordinary people who come along 
and manage to get grab attention through whatever means it is. They might not listen to even a million, but that million, especially when we've got internet and we can connect to the whole world, once you've got more and more people on board, you can't keep ignoring them because there are more of us than there are of them. Yeah. You can join a union uh, which will fight for your rights in the workplace and stuff. You, could, you can even join a political party. Well, we know that all the great law reforms in British history, all the great successful social movements came about as a result of not a handful of people like me, but a mass movement of people who said, we've had enough, we want change. Up until 1967, male homosexuality in England and Wales was punishable by a maximum sentence of life imprisonment. Today, Britain has some of the best laws in the world when it comes to LGBTI human rights. But let's not forget that the criminalization of homosexuality in England and Wales was only finally ended in 2003. Admittedly, that it was people in government who decided that yeah. in the end, but they wouldn't have done it if it wasn't for people pushing, pushing for that to happen, for that mm. change to occur. The way that we can do things now, in real time, is by having influence on people who are already there. So you're saying that a group of people should target one MP and that MP can put forward their ideas? That is a method. Yeah. And that and can be done. And all people around us and just say, you know, you do a Facebook status, you yeah. do a tweet, yeah. you, do, you can build so much from that because we have mm. so much connectivity now available to us and so much influence available to us that mm. you just use it you just go i think that guy is an idiot <laughs> or i think this yeah. is stupid you know what i mean and yeah. you can do that now are you guys gonna vote then um i'm not i'm not gonna vote um i haven't actually voted before uh -huh. until i see a change until i see where politicians are actively looking for young people to get them on board then i won't i'm gonna vote <laughs> <laughs> me Completely divorcing yourself from, from the situation <laughs> isn't the way forward. Mm. Plus, I've never voted before, and I want to see what it's like. <laughs> yeah. mm. I think that I th I'm I'm going to vote partially because it was such a faff to get myself. To <laughs> it was, I, would, yeah. I would never, I wouldn't live it down if I didn't yes. go to the polling station. But also, I agree, like you said, I don't feel connected to any party. I don't feel like any party represents what I actually want. But like, I do think I'm going to go along and probably decide in the booth. <laughs> yeah. based on yeah. like do you know what I mean and maybe stand in there for a while think about I don't know how it works like how long you're allowed to stand in there you can't really have an opinion on politics if you don't get involved but yeah. I disagree because like most of the politicians they have a they have a history of creating broken promises yeah. and that's the main reason why why should I vote if you're going to break the promise anyway so it's kind yeah. of that and also thing. it's their fault if yeah. they don't listen exactly like, if there's a lot of people who are like quite angry yeah even if they haven't voted. Yeah, and I also think that there's a right to say this. I don't believe in this system. Like I don't think saying huh. not voting. I don't, that there's this myth that if you don't vote, it means you don't care. Mm. But it's like you have a right to also go. I'm not going to vote because I don't believe in the system and I don't believe in these parties. Exactly. And I think that's just as powerful. But you have to be working towards that in some way. You have to be. Yeah, you have to use if, the other. If you just say that, like, oh, I don't support. I don't support this system and then you just don't do anything about it. But if you're like out out there kind of going into organizations, yeah. groups on the streets, you're like talking to people saying like, we should have this alternative. Yeah, I think absolutely. that's, that's mm -hmm. a pretty, absolutely that's, yeah. That, yeah. you're putting in a, like, a lot more effort than the person <laughs> going to the ballot box and going, yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. The issue here is like, how does this election and how does who our government is really, really affect us? Everyone in the country is going to be affected by government policies because there are going to be a hell of a lot of government policies over the next five years, a hell of a lot of decisions, whether that's the budget, how much is spent on social services, social security, healthcare, like, do you think the NHS should be free, the point of use? Uh, do you think tuition fees should be low? It affects, like, your day-to-day -day life. Yeah. But it's more the fact that, will it be any different if you vote or not? Will it be any different if this party gets in or if this party gets in? And I think that's where people actually go... There's no point in me voting because it won't affect me because it won't actually affect how this government is how this country is run. Governments are different. Parties are different. And even if you're even if Labour or the Conservatives win, 
in the House of Commons, which is still the thing that changes, that decides it in the end. The government has been defeated before. The government is not just what the government says. The government goes. It's undeniable that voting still matters for everyone. 